Welcome to the You're Not Crazy podcast, hosted by Jessica Knight, a certified life coach who specializes in healing from narcissistic and emotional abuse. This podcast is intended to help you identify manipulative and abusive behavior, set boundaries with yourself and others, and heal the relationship with yourself so you can learn to love in a healthy way. You can connect with Jessica and find additional resources, content, and coaching at emotionalabusecoach.com. Hello, and thank you so much for being here. Before I dive into the topic for today, I want to briefly touch on my offerings. And so I do have a few courses available on my website, emotionalabusecoach.com. You just click on courses and it will bring you to the courses that I have created. There's one on boundaries, no contact, emotional abuse recovery, and I will be launching a how to divorce a narcissist course soon. I'm working on a trauma bond recovery one currently. If you are looking to work with me, you can schedule a clarity call. A clarity call is For somebody who wants more long-term coaching and wants to talk a bit about what your situation is and make sure we're a good fit, this is not the call to book if you just need feedback advice or want to talk about your situation. This is more of what does this look like if we were to work together long-term? And the way that you book that is it's on my website. I will be closing these down for August. And the purpose of that is because I will be traveling a little bit with my daughter. I will be working a bit during that time, but I can't take a clarity call while I'm doing that with her because I also wouldn't be able to start working with you. So they will be closed for a short amount of time. It's probably going to be mid-August through mid-September because the start of the school year is always very challenging. But in that time, if you are looking for support, you can book a validation call. I always tell people if there's a time on the website that is not available and you want to see if it works, you can always email me, jessica at jessicanightcoaching.com. But validation call is basically a one-off call. If you need support, book that. Usually I can find a time that works, even if we're talking on the weekend or something like that. And if you are looking for long-term coaching, just know I don't have that many spots available right now. Of course, things change all the time, but at the time of recording, which is July 2024, I probably have one to two more spots open for the early fall. But don't let that stop you from booking or reaching out. I will always be honest if I can take you and what times are available and things like that. Okay. I'm going to dive into the topic today, which is kind of complex, but I feel like it is important. And I have been thinking about this a lot, but I think that when we begin to heal from an abusive relationship, we are actually healing from three different people at once because we have seen three different people in the relationship. And I remember feeling like I'm not just getting over one person. But like these three versions of this same person that at times I can see different parts of them. But if I look at them as a whole, there's three versions inside of one person. And that sentence won't make sense to people that haven't been in an abusive relationship. But if you are here, I'm assuming that that probably makes sense to you, that the person that you saw had at least three versions of them. If you think from beginning, middle and end, and if you're post discard then like that's definitely a new version but there's a version that love bombed you there's the version that started to change and devalue you and then person that you don't recognize at all and i assume that there might be a few more in between there too so let's start with the love bomber this is the person who swept you off your feet they made you feel like you were the most important person in the world they showered you with affection and attention they finished your sentences They literally mirrored you so that way your likes, the things that you felt really good about, they also liked too. It was intoxicating and it felt like a whirlwind romance. And I'm sure when you were in it, you felt like the honeymoon phase would never end. You thought you found your soulmate, which is useful to them because when they start treating you like crap later on, all you can remember are these good times and how much this person understands you and how they saw you for who you are. That version of them is addictive. 
because they made you feel so seen and valued and cherished. And you got such a, an intense amount of affection and validation from them. And you got used to it. And this version of them was so amazing. And it breaks your heart to know that it was fake because there was nothing real about it. It was a mask. And as quickly as they put it on, it fell off. And you have to now heal from that. You have to heal from convincing yourself that your reality wasn't actually based in reality. It was amazing because it was likely the main thing that kept you in the relationship once they started to devalue you. I know for me, it felt like a drug. And then suddenly I was like cut off from the supply. And all I was doing was like searching within this person that was now like a skeleton trying to find the parts of like where he lost like his heart and his brain along the way. I remember longing for the days that just felt like they were perfect and easy because every once in a while I would experience that again. But at that point it was just a manipulation tactic to pull me back in and healing from that person, that amazing person that embodied everything that I wanted in a human being and a partner wasn't real. And to me, that always felt like a huge betrayal. Maybe out of the three people, three versions I'm going to discuss today, I think that one hurts the most. Because what comes after this is the devaluer. This is when the mask starts to slip, and usually it's not all at once. You start to notice that this person who adored you now criticizes you for the same things that they once adored. Oh, you are such a hard worker. They're so proud of you. They want to sit back at Good Morning America and watch you do your thing. Not anymore. Now you work too much. You work too hard. Maybe they could just give you a little extra money so you don't have to work so much. But then they're not going to do it. But then they're still going to tell you that you work too much. You don't give yourself enough time. They will say things that will undermine your self-esteem. They will make you feel like you are not enough, not doing enough, not caring enough, not validating them enough, not even yourself enough, because they have created a new self that you need to be, and it's not the one they adored in the love bombing. They are not wearing the mask of the love bomber or Mr. Perfect. They are criticizing every part of who you are, and usually the parts that they appreciated. It is so confusing, because you have seen how wonderful they can be, And you start to blame yourself for this shift because they are blaming you for the shift. They are blaming you for who you are and what you do and how you show up in the world. And, oh, you want to go hang out with your friends? You don't prior, you're not prioritizing them. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough and it causes you to question if it is really happening in the first place. When they are devaluing you, it can make you feel like the choices you make, the emotions that you feel, the thoughts that you are thinking matter less and less and less to this other person. Because now it has to go through a filter of if they value it, then it's valuable. But if you value it, it is not. When you're being devalued, it is including a lot of gaslighting where your memories and your thoughts are constantly questioned, which leads to more self-doubt and additionally control. Because gaslighting is a power tactic. If you doubt yourself, then you will look to them for validation in some way, or even the, like the authority of thought, because you are the one who is doubting yourself. They belittle you. They make you feel unworthy. They make you feel insignificant. And they might be using tactics like constantly criticizing you, even covertly. They dog whistle, which means like they say things that only you will hear, especially in public. They'll intimidate you, show constant displeasure towards you, so constant annoyance, or you may be having the best day with them, and then all of a sudden one thing sets them off, and then the gaslighting will come, or they'll say the whole day was off and it was all because of you. And over time, you start to think that you deserve the mistreatment. Because what else are you going to think? And when you start to heal from this phase, it means coming to terms with the fact that the change in your partner isn't your fault. 
which is a really hard thing to come to terms with because they have blamed you completely, most likely up until this point. For me, it was also realizing that I didn't change. They did. I was still the person who was caring, loving, hardworking, did my best, was accountable. The only thing that changed was I was also defending who I actually was when in the beginning, I didn't have to do any of those things because it was just very easily appreciated. And devaluation is a very important part of the narcissistic cycle of abuse. It's about control. It's about making you feel dependent on their approval, which is now being withheld all the time. And if you're listening to this and you realize your partner's devaluing you, the one thing you can do right now is hold on to your sense of self-worth. Like the most you can find ways to value yourself because beginning to heal from grieving the person that devalued you is like dealing with the grief of someone who really became a monster, but that you don't even recognize. It's like, if you had to choose to be in a relationship with the devaluer, you never would choose it. You probably would choose to be with the love bomber, but the devaluer, you're like, I wouldn't even pick this. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm trauma bonded. So I'm stuck. It is maddening, but that is something that you can do to help yourself. If you're feeling this way right now is How can I show up and be there for myself? Go listen to my podcast on ungaslighting yourself. Start there. Because the third person that you'll need to heal from is the person that you no longer recognize at all. And this is when things get really painful. It's usually the person that you see when the relationship has ended or you've been discarded. They will appear as somebody that you don't recognize. They will be cold. They will be distant. They will be really, really cruel. They'll act like they have no emotions at times. You may have seen this person break down in the relationship over and over. Now they are emotionless. The loving partner that you knew at one point, or maybe even at different parts in the devaluing, is gone. The love bombing person no longer exists. And they will even act like you are crazy if you refer back to that time because they will be so convinced that that person was never there because they don't want you. They want you to feel like you are the scum of the earth because that is how they justify whatever the hell they're doing. It has to be all your fault because it cannot be theirs. It's a stranger. And somehow they seem to take pleasure in your pain. And for me, watching somebody that I loved deeply not have any emotions to what they did or ending a relationship that mattered to them or that they said, like, you know, I can't tell you how many times I found like cards of like, I love you. I will always be there for you. Always. But now they just are like, who are you? but you're the subject of their rage and blame because they will not take accountability and you will try endlessly to make sense of what's happening until you realize that it's not going to change. This is one of the most painful things I've gone through, trying to heal from these three different people. I remember finding letters and pictures and gifts and feeling like, who was this person? And it's especially hard if you still have to see them. And this is why no contact can help because you'll stop questioning who they are and just see who they are. Because when you continue to see them and talk to them, you'll have glimmers of these other people that they were. I've listed three, but you probably have seen more versions of them. So you will be trying to figure out how to make sense of this. And healing from this version means accepting that this person you love might never have truly existed. And it's heartbreaking because you are grieving someone who wasn't real and they will make you feel like you made it all up but you didn't the person you saw at the beginning may have been wearing a mask but they were putting on a show just for you and the stage you're in now if you're listening to this and you've gone through all three of these people is the stage of letting go of the illusion and mourning the relationship that you thought that you had so how do you move forward when you feel like you're grieving three different people First, you have to give yourself permission to feel all the emotions. It's going to be different every day. You should look up the cycle of grief 
not the cycle of grief, the stages of grief, because they're going to jump up and down them all the time. And that is okay. But you need to let the emotions come out. You know, I feel like sometimes this can be a waterfall. So if you do need to stop, if you need to pause, if you need to compartmentalize, do what you need to do, get the support that you need. But the emotions have to come out. You're like what you're going through. Most people don't understand. And it's okay to miss the love bomber that you saw. It is totally okay to feel angry at the devaluer. And it is so, so, so okay to feel confused, heartbroken, and fucking furious over the person that you saw at the end. And your feelings are valid. They are so valid, even and especially if the person you were with is making you question your reality. You have to surround yourself with people that understand even if those are people that you need to pay. And I remember that. Like, I remember feeling like the only people that understood me was my life coach, my therapist, my support group, and my acupuncturist. But I chose to be consistent with those people because that is what helped me and validated me and helped me continue to see this clearly. And this is why having coaching and therapy can be so beneficial in navigating these emotions and helping you rebuild that sense of self that you probably haven't seen in a while. And I say this all the time, but the people that work with healing from helping others heal from emotionally abusive relationships usually went through it and they want to help others because they know how confusing it is and how complicated it is and how excruciating it is. You have to focus on caring for yourself and putting some attention towards you. And for everybody that looks differently, if it is watching Vanderpump Rules on a Monday night at 7 p.m., you know, when it's 80 degrees outside and sunny, then do it. If it's staying in on a Saturday night and cleaning out your closet and rearranging everything, then do it. If it's getting a manicure, a pedicure, a facial, and a massage, then do it. If it's going for a walk, then do it. If it is silencing your phone, then do it. If it's ordering the one food that you want to eat, then do it. It it doesn't matter what it is. All that matters is that you show up for yourself. Try and put the energy into you. Instead of wondering what they are doing, give yourself 20 minutes to wonder what they're doing, to think about them, to obsess about it, and then focus on yourself and what partner you want. Because I guarantee you, it is not this. And that can be something that's really helpful is in these moments, if you make a list every single time of what you actually want in a relationship, in a partner, you can even make a list of what would need to change in this person for you to be able to go back. And the first thing on the list in most cases is they go to therapy and they work on their accountability for how they've treated me. But I guarantee you, it's not going to be where the relationship ended. It's also not going to be what you had in love bombing but it can be helpful for you to really develop some routine, spend time doing things that make you feel like you and that remind you of your personal strengths because healing is a process and this is going to be a longer road, but you are absolutely not alone in this journey. There's a whole community of listeners of at least this podcast who understand what you're going through and There is support out there. You just have to look for it. One thing that helped me was writing down the various parts of who the person was. And so I did focus on these three, the love bomber, the devaluer, and the discard. But I also focused on the other parts I saw in them because I have a tendency of putting people on a pedestal. And when they're on the pedestal, all I see is how amazing They are. I was pride of myself on really getting to know people and seeing the beautiful parts of them that maybe they don't see. I see the potential that they don't see, but I do become attached to that too. So I had to write out a part of the potential. I had to write the part that was on a pedestal. I had to write the part that showed up when they wanted validation from friends. I had to write the part that I saw when they were at work. I had to write the parts that I hated too. And I let myself do this. And sometimes I would just go and add something to it. But seeing that they had so many different parts helped me see how these parts were not integrated at all. Because after you did that, you can see what was consistent. And for me, what was consistent was a fucking hurricane of a human being. 
that's what I had a lot of the time. And I'm not equipped to put out a hurricane. I don't even know if you can like stop a hurricane. Probably not, right? It's a natural natural disaster. So how could I be responsible for holding firm in in a natural disaster? I can't. I'm a person too. But the love bomber didn't see me as a person. They saw me as something, as an example to mirror themselves off of. The person who devalued me didn't find me to be a person either. And the person who discarded me treated me worse than I've seen them treat trash that they're throwing out of their apartment. There's something on the other side. I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but there's something on the other side of this. It's a marathon. It is not a sprint. But the more time that you put into healing and yourself, the better the chance of never having to experience this ever, ever, ever again. I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope it was validating for you. To find me, you can go to emotionalabusecoach.com. If you'd like to email me, you can email me at jessica at jessicanightcoaching.com. And you can find me on Instagram at Emotional Abuse Coach. And I have recently started putting a lot of content up on Substack. That link is, I believe it's on my Instagram. If you go and you can click on it, otherwise look up Jessica Knight Coaching on Substack. Again, I hope this was helpful and please feel free to reach out if you need anything.